How do you manage your files in GarageBand? Yes, it's a interesting topic. I get asked about it a lot. There's a simple answer and then there's a more complicated answer. So we're going to start with the simple answer and that is iCloud Drive. Now it's a simple answer, but it's also an expensive answer. So when you're talking about storing files, either on your iPhone or iPad, on your Mac, even on your PC, then you need some sort of backup solution. Now, traditionally, Backup solutions have been like an external hard drive, and then you've had to make sure you always have a copy in at least two places. Because remember, one copy is not a backup. One copy is the file. Two copies is a backup. So that's kind of first principle here is that if you have something that is in one place, it is vulnerable. So don't offload. A lot of people do this. They offload a bunch of stuff from their iPhone or iPad to an external drive, and then they delete it from their iPhone or iPad. That is no longer a backup. That, that is just having thumped something in one place. And if that one place goes wrong, then you're SOL, which as we know means sort of out of luck. So what is my recommendation? Well, it's to have a some sort of cloud storage. So for me, the cloud storage of choice is iCloud Drive. That's what I go with. Uh, let's just share my screen here. So iCloud Drive, it uh, Apple give you five gigabytes, a very generous five gigabytes of storage for free. And you can store your GarageBand projects on there, but you also need to use that for backing up your iPhone and your iPad and everything else in between. I find that that doesn't really work for me and I actually do pay. Yes, it's not cheap, but it is, in my view, it is a, a worthwhile investment because here's a look at some of the prices that you have to pay uh, in various parts of the world. I'll link this down in the description so you can check this out. But this is the iCloud storage plans and pricing. So it's not a very user-friendly page here, by the way. You have to kind of jump around here. But if we go to the US, which is where I know many of you are, for 99 cents a month, you can get yourself 50 gigabytes. Now, that's not bad. If you just wanted to back up your bare essential settings on your phone and you wanted to back up, say, a bunch of GarageBand projects, you've got 10, 20, 30 gigabytes, you're a casual user, that might be enough. $2.99 a month gets you 200 gigabytes, and that's more in the ballpark. If you've got a 128 or 256 gigabyte phone or iPad or multiple, or you've got a family with a multiple multitude of products, then you'll probably need something more like that. What I go for is the two terabytes. So two terabytes means that every file I have, every GarageBand project and every device, because I have a couple of phones and a couple of iPads, it's, it's my job uh, to have all this stuff. So I've got two phones, I've got two iPads, my family all have phones and iPads and they can all back up all their stuff and you can share, you can pull that two terabytes. And for $10 a month, that peace of mind for me is worth it. If that peace of mind for you is not worth it, <laughs> Don't spend $10 a month because here in Australia, it's actually $15 a month. Now, there's Apple One as well, which you can incorporate things like Apple TV, Apple Music, and uh, Apple Storage as well, if you want to go down that route. But what does that look like in terms of how you actually store your stuff here on your iPad? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, so here's what we're talking about when we're talking iCloud Drive. Everything I have is stored in this little land here. So here's all my GarageBand stuff. Here's all the different folders I have for my in-progress, my completed, my ideas, my tutorials, everything is all in here, including a bunch of stuff in this main file folder that shouldn't be there. Let's, you know, let's just do a bit of a clean up here. We don't need any of this stuff. Yeah. So you can store everything here. So you're, we're under locations. You're in iCloud Drive, GarageBand for iOS. I also have this folder, which is my Studio Live Today folder. Yeah. So everything that I need for Studio Live Today, all of my different audio files, all of my different um, video visualizations and stings and little bits and intros and everything, that all goes there. So everything that I need is here. And the beauty of that is whether I'm on my Mac, my PC, my iPhone, or my iPad, it's all there. Now, you'll notice here that some of the stuff here when you're storing it in the cloud, when you're storing it on iCloud Drive, if we come in here to my completed file, actually most of that's actually here. Uh, but if we come down here, see this version of 6 and 8? It's got a little cloud in the corner. That means that it's in the cloud, but it's not on this device. So if I wanted it on this device, I just tap on that one. It'll actually go away and it'll download it. So you can see there, downloading 6 and 8 dot band. It'll do the little thing. Once it's actually downloaded, boom, it'll open it on up and we'll be good to go there. So the other options you have are things like Google Drive. So if you don't want to pay the extra money here for iCloud Drive storage, Google Drive will give you up to 15 gigabytes for free. 
So you can use a combination of this stuff. So you can copy your stuff over to Google Drive and then it is actually saved in another location. That's the key here again. Remember, you want things in multiple locations. Now, if it's on the cloud, that kind of counts as multiple locations because you can download it and you can have it synced on your device and it can be in the cloud at the same time. So I use a lot of Google Drive. I use Dropbox as well, which is another option. So dropbox.com. You can see here, every time I go into Dropbox at the moment, it's asking me to compare plans because it's saying, Pete, you're actually all out of storage space here, buddy. So uh, I can do this. I can go and compare the plans and you can see here it's similar sort of prices, yeah? So if we go to the personal, the family one, up to two terabytes, uh, it doesn't actually tell me the cost. <laughs> That's handy. Thanks, Dropbox. Oh, it's right down the bottom there. And they have a convoluted one, which is $323 per year or $31 a month. So you can see that the, the Apple iCloud, again, for that same two terabytes that you can share with your whole family, it's actually a pretty good deal. Because if you buy it through Dropbox or Microsoft with their OneDrive or Google Drive, it'll end up costing you quite a bit more and you don't have the benefit of having it integrated into your devices. Speaking of your devices, let's go back to where we're still doing. I think you understand the concept there, so we're going to X out of that one. Now, the place where it's most dangerous to store your stuff is this one here, on my iPad or on my, I, on my iPhone. Reason being, if your iPhone goes for a swim in the toilet, your iPad gets lifted by a horrible person that comes and steals it out of your house, you lose. It's all gone, not backed up, not backed up anywhere. So if you've got it stored just here, you can see I've only got a little bit of stuff in here on my on my iPad location, and it's just stuff that I'm kind of that I don't care about that I'm just working on at the time. That's what goes here. Some of your app storage will go in here as well, but you'll notice I don't have any custom folders. Nothing here is shared. Nothing here is stored. The other cool thing is if you're using things like Google Drive and Dropbox, you can have them integrated right here into your Files app. So that's super handy. You can just come in here and have access to your Dropbox and your Google Drive right within files. So that makes it easier for you there. So that's it's pretty simple. It's pretty basic, but I do get asked questions about it a lot. And I just wanted to cover off in a little bit of detail here to say, what do I do and what options do you have? So to, to rehash, number one option, if you want to do it completely free, grab yourself a USB drive, do it old school, plug it in and copy across your stuff. If you want to spend a little bit of coin but have the convenience, then for $10 US a month, you'll get that two terabytes. And again, I'm not affiliated in any way with Apple. So whether you do that or not, doesn't affect me. Or you can use something like Google Drive or Dropbox. The one final tip that I will give you here is that if you are trying to store your GarageBand projects, whether they are Mac or iOS, because we did we focused on iOS here, but it's exactly the same for Mac. Some platforms like Google Drive do not support the .band format. If you're using uh, either USB Drive or you're using iCloud Drive, you're absolutely fine. But the problem is, if I wanted to say copy this project across, this Acoustic Jam project, if I just tried to grab this and drag it on across and chuck it into Google Drive, it'll work, but it won't. Because then when I go to open it or download it again, it'll actually fail. So if you are looking to... Did I actually copy that? I think I tried... <laughs> I accidentally did actually copy it. It'll fail um, because it'll copy it across. So all you need to do with that, all you need to keep in mind is zip it before you ship it. I think I might have to, uh, I might have to get a website, zipbeforeship.com. <laughs> but if you zip it before you ship it, then you'll actually be able to open it. So all you need to do to zip it is hit the select button, tap on the project in question, hit the more button in the bottom right corner and tap on, oh, see, it's going to make a liar out of me now, isn't it? Why can't I compress? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm in GarageBand, am I? I'm in the garage. There you go. There's a trap. I did that on purpose to show you that you can't compress within GarageBand. It looks exactly the same, but you can't do it there. You've got to go to your files app, which looks the same, just to fool you. And then we go into GarageBand again. Let's find that same one that we had. Ideas, select, tap it. This time when you hit more, boom, you got the compress option. So we hit compress, it zips up that file and it sits there waiting. You also might notice that little cloud icon, the one that's not got the little down arrow means that it's uploading to the cloud. As opposed to downloading, it's uploading it to the cloud as we speak. So that means that you'll have it on your device here, but it will also be saved in iCloud storage, which is a pretty safe thing. I touch wood, fingers crossed, I haven't had any issues with iCloud drive storage. I haven't lost anything major. If anything, it is too 
too conservative in that every time you sign up update something, it creates multiple versions because it's like, oh, we don't know if this change was meant for this version or that version, especially if you're sharing files. So that's probably the, the biggest pet peeve, but it actually saves you because it means instead of overwriting changes, it will always save an, a backup version and then create a new version. So it will protect you from yourself and we all need a bit of protection from ourselves.